give us a drive to 13 Mitigator Ford Fusion. I'd like to thank you for listening to Let's Talk Racing.tv. Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs>
Same thing could have happened on an interstate. Same thing could have happened on King Street out here. Hey, Mr. Al Pierce. <laughs> hey, I, we're in the festive mood here. So. Did you bring the rum? You and AJ Allman bring huh? He's happy, ain't he? Next time. We're getting ready to talk about that, too, yes. by the way. Look, yes. We can move right into it. Right, right. Thanks for bringing that up. AJ Depensky. <coughs> Best Buys went to Rush Racing. Which is why Almondinger went to Penske. Why Almondinger left and went to Penske. But who's going to be in the 43? David Reagan. David Reagan's going to be move over to the 43. Now, is he bringing a sponsor with him? There's no sponsor. RPM got anybody to... Yeah, I'm sure they will. And David. PC Doctor could sponsor. There you go. <laughs> and where did uh, where did the uh, Kurt Busch wind up? Nowhere yet. Nowhere yet. Nowhere yet. There there's, the there's still a couple of Maybe. things. I, God, that was horrible. <laughs> Bet he didn't know that other camera was running. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it's it, Snay on the F bomb. Hey. But but there were, there was also the Jerry Punch, and then there was the Jamie Little thing, and I, I'm no, I'm I didn't sure. catch no, I didn't catch the Jamie Little thing, but I saw the the, the, the Doctor Jerry Punch thing, and that was just <laughs> way off base. Uh, yeah, I mean that's a very respected individual in in motorsports, Jack Jerry Punch. I mean, not only is he a commentator, but he's actually saved people's lives on the racetrack. He's <laughs> been around a long time. You know. You just don't disrespect a man like that. A, a, any, uh, I, I, you don't yeah. disrespect anybody to that level. Uh, bite your tongue and go in the garage. I'm sorry, no comment. I, yeah, yeah. It, it yeah. would have been gone over. A it it would have been done and over. Who pulled out Indy? Who yeah, who pulled out of Indy? What what, what team, team? Has, has has stopped? Uh, oh, um, the big team, uh, Carl Haas. Carl Haas. Carl Haas. Oh, I thought Newman Haas. Okay. Okay. Newman Haas is the cup. Yeah, well, isn't that the Haas with Stuart Haas? Different, different cat. A whole different cat? Okay. Oh, it is. I, I wasn't 100% sure on that. You don't need to see. Come on and join us. We're going to have. Yeah. We got, we got them all. Do, do we need to make all the. the Okay. Well, hold on, Al. Well, you got a cheat Where's sheet the You got it right. Screen. You got a cheat sheet. Now, what you do you know fill, everything? You can fill us in all that you've learned in a, in a week. Max Jones. Because everything you know in 30 words or less. <laughs> that's no big deal. Max Jones is no I big deal. I can do it in 12. But <laughs> Max Jones is no big deal? That's no big deal. Okay. Do we know who he is? Yeah. He used to, he used to be a sports car racer. He worked for Jack Roush, and then when Penny went to Ford, Jack wanted somebody over there to report back to him on what they were doing. And Jack and Max have been buddies for years. Oh, a double agent. Well, no, I mean, it was, it was um, everybody knew it was happening, so it's okay. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's common. Keselowski to field some cup cars. You heard that's that? That's Brian. Uh, is it is it Brian? Yeah, I know Brad, Brian was going to, but I didn't know Brad if Brad was going to or not. No, this is Brian. This is the brother. Brian, yep. Still trying to get something landed, apparently. Hey, he's got a he's got an Arca deal apparently. But he wants to run some cup. And they're moving the the moving the shop. I knew that was coming. Yeah, that's no big deal. So people move shops every day. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's true. I, Joe, help. What else are we going to talk oh, about? Oh, you were rolling. I, I was just catching I, up on a website I, I, trying I to figure out where you are there. Good. Now, uh, I'm looking down, you know, uh, possibility for Kurt Busch for the 43 car, but you just uh, David gone, Reagan's done, on. old news. Looks like David Reagan. David Reagan? Seems to be the hot tip. <laughs> As of like an hour ago. About an hour ago? Okay. <laughs> Put your phone down for a minute. I mean, it's right. It's just Kurt, rumor, rumor of the day. Kurt's still looking at the with the one we talked about last week, the, the furniture row. No, no. Why would I? Why would he get rid of Reagan Smith? I think Starting he's doing a hell of a team. job in that car. I love an underdog. I don't think they got enough money for a second team. The headquarters in Denver, Colorado, for crying out loud. Oh, I know. Travel expenses should be enough to almost Break put them out of business. Yeah. Hey, but they still do it. And then they get all the cars from Richard Childress too. Yeah. Cars and motors. 
Um, well, you're running the entire tour. What's the logic behind that, or is there any? Why would you Why would you not find a place somewhere? Because that's where the owner's from. And that's where he wants it. He, he wants it to be wants there. his yeah. toys in his yeah. box. Okay, that makes sense. If he's got to foot the bill, then I say more power to him. That's why Elliot was in Dawsonville for 70 years. And we've considered yeah. that way out there. Exactly. <laughs> And actually, he still is in Dawsonville yeah, with his right, son's right. son's team. The Chase. There ain't much since last week. Best well, Buy move. It should be a holiday time. There should be nothing. Nobody's nothing should be going Nobody's on. Nobody's racing to the mall. <laughs> nothing should be going on. No. Oh, Zippadelli. Kind of saw that one coming. Yeah, that's no big surprise. Yeah. But now he's going to be Danica's crew chief. Well, he had For 10 races. Well, it's because they had got to buy another one. Exactly. They had got to pay for somebody else. Yep. Um, she will absolutely dominate Speed Week. From a I, Joe missed this. So, so go ahead uh, and yeah. let's talk about this. Let, let's, let's, let's discuss this We're not this talking cup racing now. We're talking nationwide. Right. She'll win a race. Yep. She'll win a race. I got to go. Nationwide. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not arguing with you whatsoever. And there'll be about three, three or four things that come into play. She'll be at a track where there are no cup drivers, either be it Road America or Iowa or somewhere where there are no cup drivers. No Edwards, no Bush, no Kozlowski, nobody. She'll be just among her people. The nationwide guys, yeah. And there'll be something will happen somewhere during the race, and she'll pit early and get all sequence. And as the day goes on, it keeps putting her ahead of everybody else for eight or ten laps. That's just, you know, you just the way it is. You pit early, you a get strategic ahead. advantage. Right. They, yeah, well, it just so happens. And then the guys behind her pit, and then she pits, and they get back ahead of her. But in that window when she's leading, there'll be a caution or rain will come or something, and she'll win a race. Now. She's not going to take that race by the throat on the first lap and just choke it to death. She's not going to do what Tony did at Homestead. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no. Not no, coming no, through the field no, four times. No, yeah. no. But she will be, there will be a perfect storm, as they say, and she'll win a race. I, I, well, that's, I, I mean, that's how she went up at Indy. You know, you, she's a, comp exactly. a competent driver, good equipment. Right. You keep plugging timing, along. Timing is everything. Well, I mean, it was Indy. She's a prime example. If, I've always said if, if you run, if you consistently run fifth, eventually you win a race. Yeah, and she doesn't wreck Eventually, the brakes will come your way, and you will find yourself she up. She doesn't wreck very often. No, no. She yeah. stays out of trouble. She's, she's good about that. So, but she will win a race. And, and she's a decent enough driver where she she probably deserves to win a race. Well, I don't she deserves to win one of them. I mean, it, I mean it, lots it, of guys deserve to win races and well, that's never true. won them. Uh, that's true. Here's one interesting. NASCAR is looking to ban driver-to-driver -driver communications. That'd be awful. Excuse me, that'd be awfully hard to do. I, I think it would, too. Yeah, it's going to be real hard to do. Because I'll tell him, and he'll tell you, but I don't tell you, but the message... Well, they're doing it with the spotters for yeah, years. Spot, the spotters will be yeah. doing it, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I, I guess going from that, uh, you know, communicating, especially with the two-car drafting, you know, just having two guys you know, chatting away to to work together like that. And I, it, does it hurt it or does it help it? I don't know. It's it's different. It's not competition, the, though. The, the, the two-car bump drafting is definitely different. I'm not really – when I first saw it, I wasn't a big fan of it, but I don't know if this is – is this something that needs to grow on me? Is this my personal opinion or is it a negative form of racing? I don't know what's your take on that. It is what it is. Well, well, yeah, they're, they're gonna I, I guess it up this year. Yeah. Gonna, well, it is they, what it is. But do, it this year. do you like it? Not especially. I think you? it's better than it was in the past. I like the two car a little bit better than I do the five or six car, like it was in years past, where nobody could do anything. They were afraid to pull out a line. I think it's a little bit better in that perspective. Yeah, it's better than that, and it's it's. I, I, did, I wasn't a big fan of of. But, Let's the go entire back field running three wide the entire race because it just where... really desensitized that three wide <laughs> moment that was the exciting edge of your seat, stand up and spill your drink on a guy next to you. Whoa! Kind of moment. They're well, doing they for 500 a, miles, you know? They had a four wide moment at Talladega in, in April where they came to the line, eight eight of them. Right. Four groups of, uh, two groups of four. 
right there together. I mean, that's it doesn't get much better than that. You can't yeah. answer closer than that. That's true. I, I'd like to go back to 76, 77, where, you know, you, you could do the slingshot still. You really can't do that with these to a certain extent. You know, In back 76 then, and 77, how many guys finished on the lead lap? Well, yeah. Not very many. That was, the only that was great when you actually had yeah. two guys on the same straightaway at the end of the race. Right. Uh, probably up into well, El, probably the Elliott dynasty <laughs> those when they first started putting finishes. restrictor plates and stuff. When, when those El memorable finishes of, of uh, Petty and Pearson at Daytona and Allison and Kale at Daytona, those guys, those, those memorable finishes were the exception more than a rule. Right. There weren't many guys, I mean, they... Most of the time, guys won by, oftentimes, by a full lap. Yeah. A lot of guys won by a full yeah. lap. Yeah. So. What was it? Uh, Ned Jarrett in 65, 64, won by 14 <laughs> laps? Uh, at Darlington. At Darlington, yeah. And Petty, <laughs> Petty came from seven down to win at Dover one year. Yeah. Kelly Arbor won at Daytona by well, Coming back three is down. exciting. Running away isn't. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Bill Elliott did it at Talladega. Um, at Talladega. Got two so laps down and two made him up down under green. Made him up, made him up under green. Under green. With the no whole caution. thing was green. That Dover race, was that the same, as, the same thing? Buddy Arrington way? race. <laughs> so Buddy Arrington stopped. Petty needed a caution. So Buddy Arrington stopped. They didn't <laughs> throw the caution. So Buddy cranked up and went on again to stop again. Each time he stopped a little bit higher up. He <laughs> finally stopped right in the middle of the racetrack. And they threw the caution. Richard needed it. Probably won threw the, the caution at him at that point. <laughs> yeah. Richard won the race and allegedly delivered parts and pieces to Buddy, to buddy the next, the next day. day. Uh -huh. <laughs> we, we, if I recall, Buddy's cars look like they just changed the number on the car with the yeah, yeah. 67. <laughs> yeah. It went from 43 to 67. Still had the wheel marks in it. <laughs> I got, I got, a, we got a Yankee over here, Al. In, Where in, I from the north. Where? Okay. Right over there. Where? Joe. New Jersey, originally. Where? Uh, right outside of Newark. West Where? Orange. West Orange. Okay. My <laughs> mother's there? from Newark. Oh, okay. Downtown Newark. These guys don't know where West Orange is. I you do. know where West Orange is? Yeah, it's just on the other side of East Orange, isn't it? <laughs> he is a doctor. Yeah. He's smart like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, let's, let, let's bring up about the inductees. Okay. Not about Morristown. Markets. Morristown. Morristown, oh, Northwest. Philadelphia. No. Oh, Morristown. Oh, Morristown, Philadelphia. Right. Cherry Hill, Mount gotcha. Laurel. Gotcha. Exit five. Don't, uh, there you go. What exit? Jersey. Exit yeah. five. Right. <laughs> All right. What? Hall of Fame. I'm going. What about it? Richie Evans going in. Oh, sure. Hell yeah. Oh, absolutely. Richie, Kale, Dale Inman. Daryl. Daryl Waltrip. And um, Richie and uh, one of the Wood Brothers. Oh, Glenn, uh, Leonard. Leonard. Leonard Wood. Yeah. What do you think? No, 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 that's not right. Not Leonard. No. Not this time. It's Dale Inman. Right. They wouldn't put two crew chiefs in same time. Uh, Richie Evans. Right. Kale Yarbrough. Daryl Waltrip. Daryl Waltrip. And, um... It's one of the Wood Brothers. No, it isn't. Yeah. I believe it is. I believe it is. They don't. I don't think they're putting. They're not putting Dale Lemon and Leonard Wood in together. I don't think so. Well, they could. I got the event on here. One a team owner, one a crew chief. No, Leonard Wood was not a team owner. Glenn Wood was. You looking at that, Matt? Uh, yeah. Inductee. Oh, does your laptop work? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Oh, you're lucky. Yours does too. Uh, Mine has a severe operator problem. Just 2012 class inductees okay. are Are you building suspense? No, we can't find them. Class of 2012. Kale Yarbrough, Daryl Waltrip, Dale Inman, Richie Evans and Glenn Wood. So Glenn okay, would Glenn go Wood, in. Right, okay. Glenn would go okay. in under an owner. Yeah, right. And Leonard's got to wait a year or two. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Richie <laughs> should be in. Yeah. Which means though that next year Jack Ingram's got to go in. 
when they when they listen, think of think of my yeah, theory. Yeah, 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 think yeah, of it. Think of okay. it. Wait a minute. Yep. When they start going down to the lower levels, and you're getting the best of the best at the lower level, you've opened the door with with Richie, deservedly so. It's got to be Jack Ingram next. Well, I was thinking maybe a Sam Ard. Too many champion? No, Jack won too many championships. Really? Way many more. Way many more. Yeah. All NASCAR. And yeah, all. Because you know, people have brought sport. up Dick Trickle, but Dick, most of Dick Trickle's record was ASA, not NASCAR. Uh, he, he'll never get in NASCAR Hall of Fame. No, he, he didn't. NASCAR wise, he didn't. He didn't really have a record. No. One or two wins, something like that. We got Chrissy on. Yes, he wants to ask you a question. Hey, Chrissy, how you doing? I'm doing great, Guy. How are all you doing over there tonight? Well, we're wet, but we're warm. I hear you. I hear you. Hey, Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays to all of you. But I got a question for the IndyCar. Go ahead. Okay. If we change the body style, it's going to take the whole look, like Tiger Daddy says, away from the IndyCar, and we don't want to do that. But my question is, why can we not make four posts, higher up the windshield a little bit, so this way, when the car does overturn, it doesn't take the impact, and the brunt doesn't hit the guys in the helmet. He does it; the head doesn't take the impact. Those four post would. Like what the dragsters are doing. Exactly, but don't enclose the cockpit because if you enclose it, you're going to take Indy. You're going to take the whole style away from Indy out. It's not going to look like Indy cars no more. It's going to ruin it. So what I don't understand is, and unfortunately. I feel like that's how the other gentleman, uh, Welburn, got killed is because when he flipped, the whole brunt of that accident went on his head. Yeah. And, and if he had had those four posts, one on each corner, the windshield raised up a little bit, like Tiger Tom said, if that car flipped over, boom, the impact would not nowhere near be the driver's head. Well, I, I, can, I see your point on it, and I agree to it. I, I think they do need to put something over it. But we lost a drag racer a couple years ago. Um, in English Town. At, at English Town um, with that same type of system that we are talking about. Scott Coletta. Scott Coletta. So. But was, was, he, was he using the enforced piping that they make today and stuff? I mean, the piping and stuff is made twice as good. They improve it every year. Oh, oh yeah. NHRA, they require, they're very stringent on what kind of piping they use. They have to use chrome molly. It has to be inspected, and it has to be x-rayed every single year that they run those cars. Okay, well, I can understand that. But still, I mean, honestly, if they could do that and not change the look, because if they enclose these cockpits, they're going to take the whole look out and deal with I, I, You know, and I have, and I have a question now, but I, I, why, why not enclose them? Now, I don't mean like a full roof, but why not a, a canopy-style You'll ruin Enclosure. the Indy. You'll ruin it. Uh, y yeah. You'll change it. Will you ruin it? I don't know. But you but, know, but are we now? Are we going back? And, and I see what. And I agree with Chrissy. Are we going into what the the boat drag racers are doing and making a pod? But well, I mean, a, a lot of your yeah. sports cars have that that enclosure, and it, there's not a very very big I difference between. Like your ALMS cars, and then and I don't know all my divisions. I'll put it on your, water. Your LM, LMP. Exactly. I think they are. Yeah. Now, I'm serious. Take the tires off and float that sucker because, in all honesty, it, it, it's going to take the look away from Indy. It's going to ruin the look. Well, well, okay. Why couldn't we go back a couple of years when they look? Well, not a couple, a few years where it looked like sprint cars. Make them a little bit bigger. Make them wider. Make them longer. And then put that double roll bar over it and and keep the, the old style look to it. You, you, you know well, what I mean? Uh, you know, at one point, Slow at down. one point in time, sprint cars had no roll cages, you understand what and I'm they put them on. So I don't. Maybe have we reached that point at Indy? I don't know. Do what, Chrissy? You understanding what I'm saying though about you know the, the post? I'm talking about them doing something entirely different than the NHRA guys, guys did. I'm talking about putting these in each corner, right there where the driver is, just where the driver is, where. If he was to overturn, the impact in the brunt, literally, Tiger drew out, drew out some diagrams of this. And he's very, you know, innovative. You know Daddy's a good engineer. And, if, and he's into safety. That's all he focuses on is his safety. But if you were to enclose it, just, not enclose it, but just to put those pipes where the driver is himself, just where he's at, it would, it would totally cut out any driver taking the impact on the hit. Yeah. Kind of like what they do with the... Um uh, the legends, um, 
the the roadsters. The Thunder uh, the Thunder, Thunder roadsters. roadsters, right? Yeah, kind of yep. like exactly what. Yeah, exactly. But it's more like toward the driver, really, in the, and that's why they stopped the roadsters, I think. And I really wish they'd bring them back because those cars are really fun to drive. Yeah. You know, and what's really bad is, you know, Mr. Welborn losing his life like this is very, very sad and tragic. But fortunately, look how many fatalities there are in Indy. There are not that many. But whenever there is one, it becomes a mountain. Well, and it's just like that in NASCAR. Whenever, anytime a an, uh, NASCAR driver dies, you know, they make a big deal out of it. Well, look at it this way. When, you know, with all due respect, when Earnhardt died, you know, they blamed it on his seatbelt. They blamed it on everything. But, you know, I'm sorry. You know, I, I disagree on, on a bunch of stuff that's been said about that issue. But, you know, he was also allowed to uh, wear a, uh, a helmet that wasn't fully enclosed, you know. And had he had a fully enclosed helmet, you know, God only knows what would have happened. Well, that, that accident did change a lot of things. I mean, uh, seatbelt mounting points became a lot more stringent. The Hans device became mandatory. Full face helmets became mandatory. Well, had to take the brunt of that. Un un unfortunately, it took the loss of a champion to bring it to that point, and hopefully Indy will look at Weldon's tragedy here and do something and, and to do help something about safety it. some. So. What those steps are, I, it's not, that's not really for me to say. I mean, there's, there's a lot of steps we could talk about. Man. Oh, yeah, it's a I'm matter of what saying, they're going to do, not you know, what they could do. Look into it. Tell somebody, you know, look into it, but more or less put the post right there where the driver is, not necessarily like the NSA RA car, but put it where the driver's head is. Just put those four posts by the seat on each side. Yeah. Way if, this, if these cars roll over, the guy's head's protected. Right now, he's going to fall, he's going to hit his head. That's gonna, it's over. Well, and the big problem about Indy cars, it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, the head impact's what's going to get you. Um, the guy, that, Alex Zanardi? Actually, his legs. I just read the, the an report in there, and, and what had happened was it wasn't so much the wall that he caught. He was he caught the catch fence. He caught the catch fence. And more significant than that was he caught one of this, right the, the too. main structures for the catch fence. He caught yeah. one of the poles basically that held the fence up, yeah. which is... But it, yeah, if they didn't have that catch fence there and they had the foam wall there, I wonder what was, you know, that, that would be another issue. That catch fence could be, you know, a, you know, not so good as a safety barrier as they think it is. Well, yeah, and he missed he missed the he missed the soft wall altogether. Uh huh. You know, he didn't even get near that. He was probably ten feet above well, the soft wall. Well, and the thing I pointed out too was, you know, fortunately that, that happened where the banking was because it had it had had that happened where the flat part of the speedway was, he probably would have cleared the fence. Yeah, and sailed off into the stands. Well, yeah. guys, it was nice talking to you. I just like to add on a flip note that that uh, Indy driver Rahel did a wonderful thing for the Weldon auctions on eBay. Unfortunately, I that nobody paid the gentleman for the auctions, which is really sad. So, uh, anybody listening to this, please don't bid on their auctions if you're not really wanting to support the family and the fund for Mr. Weldon's family. Because the driver, well, hell, he's for hell. He's really trying to do his best to auction his personal stuff, and I think that's pretty bad. What happened to him? Well, we're glad that he put it in there, but sorry to hear that. Yeah, and you guys have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Keep rocking. You too, you Chrissy. Too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. i got to remember how to do this. I will screw this up in a heartbeat. Um, Matt's about to hang up on someone. Uh, I'm trying to. I think i got Timothy on the other line. Let's talk about this a little bit, because I want to talk about this Hall of Fame thing, because I'm always intrigued by it. All right. Um, and actually, looking at it, Jack Ingram was in this year's Oh, yeah. That's who they yeah. looked at. I'm sitting here looking at it, and we've got one, two, three, four that are with us, and Richie is the only one that's passed on. Do you think that they're looking at that, that they're saying, listen, this guy's gone, we need to, you know. I would think they'd get people who were about to be gone. And that, think, that was I my next think, thing. Yeah. I would think Cotton Owens, um, I don't. I don't know. I mean, Cotton Owens is, is a name that comes to mind most often about who should be in next year. Um, I, I don't know if they look at that. I mean, you think? I mean, the first class, the first class had to be Petty and Earnhardt. Yep, absolutely. Had to be both both Francis. Yep. And I think Junior was a no-brainer. Yeah. I mean, no, absolutely. Second class had to be Allison. Had to be Pearson. Had to be 
I can't remember all of them. Maybe oh, Jared. now you get to ask me to go back. Ned Jarrett, Jarrett was, Ned Jarrett was yeah. one. Jarrett was in there. Um, um, Daryl and Kale had to go in together. That's Lee Petty. Right. Yeah. Uh, Lee Bobby a David Pearson, Bobby Allison, Lee Petty, Ned Jarrett, and Bud, Bud Moore. Moore. Yeah, okay. And they're, except for Lee, they're all still they're with all us. all alive, yeah. Yep. Well, what should be the minimum requirement? What, what's the requirement to go in the Hall of Fame? It's I mean, absolutely what, what you subjective. It? It, it is. Absolutely it's not how many subjective. races you won. No. Nope. Uh, because you, you get guys that, are, that are still four. currently active in racing, like Jeff yeah. Gordon and Jimmy Johnson. That the well, you've got to be it, retired for some The The, the record book puts them there already. Yeah. You know, so. <coughs> but it's all subjective. And every single one of them is well deserved, I, in, in my opinion. Oh sure. I was happy to, to choose see from. Richie get in, yeah, me too. just because of what yeah. he has done. Not for Sprint Cup, not for Nationwide, but for that local short yeah. track legend. Which is why Jack Ingram got to go in. I agree, but it, but I was bringing up, you know, we still got like Sam Ard that did a lot. But, but Jack had all those championships. That's true. I think Rod's got something to say. Yes, Timothy, what do you think about this whole thing? <clears throat> oh, it's just uh, a lot of great people that's being inducted in, and uh, that's our history of the sport. It's uh, cool to kind of sit back and listen to the stories and and uh, just say that you're a part of it now, but what they kind of created, you know? It's pretty cool. Yeah. You're Virginia native. You grew up around Martinsville. Did you remember seeing Richie run out there? Uh, no, I don't remember seeing any of that, so I, I uh, can't really say that I have, but you know, obviously Daryl Waltrip and Richard Petty at Martinsville many a time. We got Timothy Peters, uh -huh. truck driver, um, and you've already announced you're back next year with Red Horse, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So, and you had a pretty decent year this year. It wasn't bad. Uh, we started off uh, okay, and then we kind of got on a roll. And uh, there in the middle of the summer stretch, we kind of fell off a little bit and picked back up towards the end. So we started off strong. We ended strong. If uh, we hadn't I went down the wrong path in the middle of the summer, I, I, I think our points still would be just a little bit better, but I'm not complaining. This is the best finish in points that, we, that I've ever had, and we've won a race and set on the pole, so uh, with the competition the way it was, that's, uh, we can't knock it, that's for sure. I'd say that makes it a pretty damn good year. Really? Yeah, I, I'd <laughs> say, it, yeah. And you ran well pretty much everywhere you went to, though. We did. Uh, there's, uh, there's about there's about three tracks that I'd like to throw out and, and try to race them over again, but uh, they don't call a big car racing for nothing. <laughs> That's true. No, no do-over button. I wish I had one of those. Mulligan, a mulligan. Mulligan. There you go. <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. If I go back and hit the easy button, I definitely would have hit it about four or five times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I want a batteries out of mine this year. <laughs> now, he's out Christmas shopping, too, by the way. Oh, what's for Christmas this year? More importantly, what are you buying us? Yeah. Because <laughs> it is all about us, you know. Um, a big box wrapped full of ribbons. Yeah, you wrapped full of ribbons. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, uh, you know, spending a great time with the family. Uh, out trying to finish up a little bit of shopping now. And, uh, you know, it's hard to believe that Santa Claus is going to come see us Sunday. So I'm, I'm excited to wake up Sunday morning and see what he left me. Well, we hope we hope he left you a lot of good things. Me and new trucks. And uh, I'm looking, you know, for a great 2012 season. And and if uh, he dropped off a, a couple of extra sponsors in the stocking, that wouldn't be such a bad thing to you. No, that that would be a very good thing. Who's your teammate this year? No, uh, we're still working on that, but uh, you know, look for Red Horse to have two trucks. And Service Central is going to be back on board our Toyota Tundra uh, in 2012 for 10 races, and that's a long-term relationship, so we're excited about that. Excellent. Uh, you know, working out some other logistics with our current sponsors for next year, so, uh, you know, looking for uh, for color to be on our Red Horse race. You're still going to be in the 17, right? Absolutely. 
Well, maybe you need to go talk to Tide. <laughs> you think they did it for the number? Because yeah, uh, because they they were on a five for a while there too, you know. Oh yeah, that and would be great. You know, uh, what better what better ten, looking ride would you right. have than the tide ride number seventeen at Martinsville? I'm I'm all game for that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, it, it won there a few times. Tied in seventeen. Hey, heck yeah, heck yeah. You know, we uh, that's one thing I want to do. Uh, I want to win both races at Martinsville and you know into seventeen. And if tied is on it, that, that'd be even that'd be even uh, even better. That'd be even better. Yep. Have to make sure that old DW is around for that. There you go. <laughs> well, and he's going in the Hall of Fame this year. Might be able to make that happen. You never know. Things, uh, mysterious things have happened before. So that's it. Fingers crossed. Well, listen, we're not going to keep you too long because I know you're out Christmas shopping and you're having a good time with your family and all that. Oh man, I was glad that uh, I was able to call in and talk to you guys, and it's always a pleasure. So thanks for having me on. Do they, do they get to test anywhere before Daytona? Al Pierce is sitting here with us, and he, he he's he's asking. A, go ahead, ask him. Do y'all get to test any at all before Daytona? We don't. Um, 06, I believe, was the last time. 06 or 07, the last time they had. Uh, 08 was the last time that they had winter testing at Daytona. And they kind of, any track that the truck nationwide or cup cars race on, with the exception of a NASCAR test, uh, is the only testing policy that there is now. With the trucks, uh, really and truly, unless there is tire testing, there's no testing at all just to try to keep costs down. So, uh, you know, we, I wish, because it isn't nothing like a little preseason thunder to get down and uh, see what you got as far as equipment-wise and shake off the rust a little bit, too. Before this year, you could, you could have gone to Rockingham if you'd wanted to. Right. When the, Before uh, this year. At, when, at midnight on December 31st. Yeah. Uh, that's, the, that's the last time that you'll be able to practice at Rockingham. So we've, uh, we actually, after Talladega this year, I went and did a little testing there. That was uh, very productive. And Rockingham is very cool, by the way. And uh, we actually are getting to do uh, a tire test, is what they're telling me in March. So looking forward to doing that. It's gonna be it's gonna be a very cool race. I think the crowd is gonna be amazing. The fans in that area have always been amazing and the track is uh it's it's gonna put an awesome race on for fans, that's for sure. So the trucks are going back to Rockingham? Yeah. So were we first time. So we I'm not looking November. forward to that. It's definitely gonna be it's going to be very different. We went and practiced, and the fourth lap on the racetrack was like a second floor than the third lap. So that tells you how bad it chews up some tires. Yeah. Oh, oh my all, kind of place. It's always been a tire, tire track. I'm sorry? It's always been a, a bad track on tires. <clears throat> oh, yeah, for sure. And, uh, it's, uh, it's it's like another North Wolfsburg. Low line, high line, middle line, and it's all going to fall back into that gas pedal. Yeah. yeah. So. What you're willing to put out and deal with. Yeah, exactly. Probably end up being about like a Darlington running it up against the fence to keep from hitting it so hard. <laughs> right around last, close to the wall, try to stay on the lead lap, make a go at the end. Make a go at the end, yeah. So. Right. Tim Timothy, are those two Brazilian drivers any good? Oh, yeah. Uh, Nelson PK and Miguel Saluda. Yeah. They got really a lot of money behind them, don't they? I'm sorry? They've got a lot of money behind them, I understand. I know PK's father, obviously, is pretty well off. The Formula One racer, isn't it? They, uh, they, they definitely uh, have great sponsors uh, as far as where, they, where it comes from. I couldn't say. I, I kind of know the, the background on Nelson. and, and you know, Nelson and Miguel are really good guys, so I wish them, wish them well. They're, they're definitely a force to reckon with every week. They're pretty good guys to be teammates with, weren't they? They were. They were. I uh, wish, wish, uh, wish they would have stayed around, but, uh, you know, everybody has their reasons, so we, we, we wish them luck. There you go. All right, Timothy, we'll get on out of here. We're going to BS our way for the next 20 minutes through, so go get some Christmas shopping done. 
All right, guys. Hey, thanks again, and Merry Christmas, and uh, you guys have a good one. You Merry too. Christmas. We'll talk good to you after you. the first. Thank you, sir. All right, bye. One of the nicest guys on the on the truck circuit. Have you ever had a chance to? Oh yeah, I talked yeah. to him when he won Martinsville a couple yeah. years ago. The well, last year, I guess. Good guy, really good guy. Let's get back to this Hall of running, Fame thing. Running, <laughs> always, always we one of the guys is kind of running at the. I always saw him kind of running at, at the, that place in the field that I call the back of the halves and the front of the have nots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, which in the truck series seems to be between fifth and tenth. Yeah. Which again, if you keep plugging along in there. You'll, you'll end up in a win column. Well, he, he did a solid performance at Martinsville a couple years ago and won that race. And they won. Where'd they win this year? He's been a contender. He has a Daytona win also. And, yeah, he's got a Daytona win. July? No, he had the, the first one at the beginning of the year. Was it last year, Al? It wasn't this year, but it was this year Michael Walter won it. Yeah, it was last, last with year. With that cheater won. back Ooh, in. that cheater spoiler. Fell down. Yeah, the last. <laughs> it might have been, been a year ago. First race. Last lap deal. A year ago, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, always solid. So he, he's a solid runner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, good, good, good running guy. Fun to watch. All right, what about the Hall of Fame? Do you, do you not like what, that what, group? What stone have we not on there? Who, no, is, I do like that group, and I and I think it, it fits it well. What's going to be the next group? I mean, we just talked about Jack Ingram. He's got to go in. He's got to go in. Cotton what Owens what, are, what go are the in. categories? You got what? Draw, well, Doesn't matter. Know. Oh, there's, there's, no, there's, there's no categories. So there's no categories. Okay. Wide open. Five guys, that's it. So it'd be five drivers, um, five crew chiefs, five owners. It, it, don't, yeah. it don't matter. Um, Who is it? Start off at the top. That's right? Okay, Richie Evans got in. Oh, he's already in. Okay. okay. Jerry Cook. Not for a while. Not for a while. Fireball Roberts. I think he would. Who's got the most starts in, in, in Cup history? Richard. Fre Richard. Freddie Lorenz. Richard no. You don't think so? Not yet. Bobby Isaacs. No. Fireball? That's Kale. Benny Parsons. Eventually, mm, possibly. Uh, yeah, eventually. Cotton Owens. Yes. Yeah, I should agree be. with that. Should be. Should be early. Buck Baker. <sighs> Three-time champion. Um, First one to win back-to-back -back championship. Possibility. First driver. Possibility. Uh, Henry Clay Earls. Uh, after a while, not yet. Did Raymond Parks. Why is yeah, Raymond Parks will probably make it? Why is Clay Earls listed among the Founder. nominees and not uh, Paul Sawyer? Founder of Martinsville Speedway. Ah, right, we'll get to that. Let's see if he's on there. Les Richer. Richer, uh, not yet. Okay. Joe Weatherly. That's he. Mm. That's close. He'd be pretty good. J there's Jack Ingram. Should be. Yep. Herb Thomas. Yes. Four-time champion. Uh, Glenn, that guy, he got in. Leonard Wood. Uh, he yeah, should be but, pretty close. Yeah, but not right. At, not the year after. Uh, Glenn. Dale Inman, I don't think. Or Dale. That's Daryl, and that's Dale Inman. Curtis Turner. Well, now Bill France hated him. It, it'll be a while for him. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that one coming. Red Byron. He might get in. They like him. Yeah. Richard Childress. Too early. Ray Kendrick. Too early. Here's an interesting one. I'm going to come back to Tim him. Tim, Tim Flock. Maybe. Or the and monkey. The or the monkey. <laughs> one of the monkey. One of the monkey. <laughs> Um, T. Wayne Robinson. Look, he never got any credit, see? Actually, Ralph Seagrave probably should go in ahead of T. Wayne. Think so? Ralph Seagrave was the guy who brought Winston to, to NASCAR. He brought it. T. Wayne became the program manager, but Ralph Seagrave was the guy who made the decision to let's sponsor this tour. Yeah. So. Well, didn't they bring it to Junior first and Junior? Junior said, I, I, it's too much money for me. Yeah, you need to be yeah. with NASCAR. Which is, which is another reason why he was in the first class. Who else do you think needs to be in there? Well, I don't understand how Clay Earls can be nominated and not Paul Sawyer. I, I agree. Um, I think Paul did a lot for NASCAR in the beginning. Yeah, but the difference was that Clay Earls and Bill France Sr. were business partners. Yeah. They were moonshine buddies. Moonshine. <laughs> they, each, they each packed heat. <laughs> they did. They both carried guns. <laughs> I believe it. There, there's some Ron Harris stories out there about guns. Um, Daryl Walter. Not that he is not. Uh, he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Don't you think it's a little too soon for him? Don't you feel that, that there's. What's, what's a too, few what's too more? soon? And then we started this discussion okay, before. Then, okay, then take, take him out. Who do you put in? Well, let's look. 
Well, we got one of the Flock Brothers, Red Byron. You know, we talked about Red Byron won two or three races, maybe. He won the first championship in only eight years. I'm not questioning Daryl's integrity for being there, but why is Daryl Waltrip going in the Hall of Fame? Because of three championships. championships. 84 wins. 84 wins. Right. In in television. Yep. Well, Raymond Parks, that's your first championship car owner. I know. And they like him. NASCAR likes him. Yeah. And he is, I believe, still alive. He still is. He's like 94, 95. Yeah. Very close. So. Uh, he might make. I, th- I can see Raymond Park, Scott Owens, um, Jack Ingram, and either Fireball or Joe Weatherly or Curtis Turner going next year. Should we write yeah. these down for next year? See who's yeah, if you want to. See, yeah, see, want see, to. see who's got the prediction. I wrote it down. You know, Danica will win a race. Yeah. Lorenzo so. won't make it yet. Whose picks? Um, Benny Parsons won't make it yet. I mean, Benny didn't win that many races. He won 17 or 18. And he won a championship, but he won one. He won Lots one. of guys have won one. But you but also his announcing, got, too, he did a lot yeah, media-wise for the sport, uh, too. Uh, broadcasting, so. and it was very well liked in the broadcast. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, but, you know, now you still got Buck Baker. You got Buddy Baker. Oh, uh, Buddy Baker. Not in your lifetime. You don't think Buddy will make it in? No, eventually, think. but, you know. Um, eventually, yeah. everybody will make it in. Did Bobby make it in? Bobby made it in second, last year. Second class. Bobby Allison made it in second class. And don't even talk about Donnie in the same breath. That's not even, <laughs> no, that, that even, that's not even close. That, that's not even close. So, um, would you like to be part of that process? I think I should be part of that process. I have told the Hall of Fame, I've been doing this for 43 years. I have seen people race before some of the voters were even born. There are voters, there are people that go to that NASCAR convention and vote on Hall of Famers who weren't born when I started covering NASCAR. Right. They wouldn't know Fred Lorenzen from Fred Flintstone. Yeah. And they have never seen Buck Baker. They've never seen half those guys race. And I just, I told them one day, I said, you know, you got a bunch of you got a bunch of pretty boys here, who work for big papers in the southeast or used to, and and all they know is what they read. Tim Richmond should be in eventually, but he won't be, because of the way he passed away. Yeah. got out. Yeah, that's one of my favorites right there. You know. Yep. So, uh, here, there's another one. Um, his crew chief Harry Hyde. Yeah, Harry that, should be in. That Harry should be in. A smoky unit should be. I was getting ready to say. Well, we should be nominated anyway. He, yeah, he should at least He's not be nominated. Smoky unit could too well put up his own hall. Yeah, yeah. And it'd That's be shorter, true. narrower, and lighter than the, than the regular hall. Right. Yeah, but well, okay, you're going to put him in NASCAR Hall of Fame. He, you know, he he belongs in the Indy Hall of Fame too. Yeah, he Just, probably does. Rightfully so. Yeah. You know, the cheaters hall of fame. Well, you know, oh, yeah, that's true. well, now what about the guys? And, and you mentioned Indy, and that just brought it to my attention was AJ people Foyt. that went back and forth. Foyt, AJ Andretti, Foyt, Andretti, Parnelli yeah. Jones. Andretti, Andretti won one race in NASCAR. Yeah, but Parnelli ran in it. He, what? he might not, he might have won one or two Riverside races. Yeah, but you, know, you got AJ guys should like be that. in for Do colorful interviews alone. I, I think AJ won three or four NASCAR races: Ontario, Riverside, Daytona. You, know. you got guys like, and, and I'm not going to bring. I hate to do this, but you got you, you got guys like J.D. McDuffie. Yeah, he's not that big of a name. Dave Marcus. He, and that Dave was Marcus is the one I was thinking of. Was like, you Dave know, Marcus. What you, what, they never did a lot. Dick Brooks. Back you know, on the sport, the also rants. Junie Don Lovey. No disrespect. There's to someone them. that deserves to be in it. Harry well, Gant. And may well be at some point in time. You know. The problem, one of the things I think that NASCAR did wrong, among others, they limited it to five people per year. Eventually, a lot of guys are going to not live long enough to be part of that five part group. Of but what I was what I was told was, they wanted five guys in the first class because they wanted those five to be to get all the attention. They wanted to get every bit. It was going to be an hour TV show. And they figured five guys spread over 
52 minutes of TV time would give everybody a lot. If you made it 10 guys in the first class, they'd only get a little bit of time. Right. And they wanted them to come out, give a speech, get their 10 minutes of fame on TV and go on. But once they locked into five guys per class the first year, they thought, well, we can't, again. we can't make it any bigger because they'll say, why did you do this to first class? So they're stuck with five people per year. And, and, and a lot of guys aren't going to make it. Yeah. Well, it is NASCAR. I mean, they've, they've changed rules along the way before. I'm sure they could change this if they really wanted to. Yeah, if they wanted to. If they yeah. wanted to. Yeah. Wait, Richie, well-deserved. Dale Inman is probably the most deserving crew chief to get in, in, in my opinion. Yeah, he, he and Leonard done. Wood are, are so close together. Yeah. That, it, that was a big road battle. I mean, he did win eight championships. Won one more than Richard Petty. Won more yeah. races than Richard Petty, actually. Mm -hmm. So, but All Dale right. Dale Emmon is a little bit angry that Leonard Wood didn't get in with him because they're they're pretty good buddies. Yeah, and they're a lot of fun together. I seen him and, and Richard at Martinsville, and they were on the holler during the race, and it looked like they weren't there just to. They were enjoying it. You could tell by the way they were acting, and they were enjoying that race. Is, are they still that way whenever oh, yeah, they go? Yeah. They still love to go, don't they? After there's not a, there's not a whole lot of things more fun than to be sitting in the hauler of the Wood Brothers hauler or, or the, the lounge and have Inman come in and Inman will look at Eddie Wood or, or Lynn Wood or look at Leonard and say. 1957 at Hickory. Remember <laughs> the night we all went down to, you know, and they will tell a story and you'll end up just rolling on the floor. Yep. They're talking about racing taxi cabs or because the rental cars at Hickory, they weren't you know, they would They would commandeer a taxi cab and they'd go racing down looking for a burger place. Or they would they would run, they would run from Charlotte to Winston-Salem to get hot dogs at Pullian's, the hot dog place, and, went, and they'd race back to Charlotte and try to eat them while they were still hot, but 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 Dale Inman and Leonard Wood have got more stories. If you could sit those guys down in a room for five hours and feed them and let them drink and put a camera on them, it'd be the, it'd be the funniest. You can make a. Ross, you can I, make I, a I think it'd be a special. <laughs> you can make a series. We, did, we did get Leonard Wood on. We had Leonard on, and he told quite a few stories when we had him on here. Uh, but yeah, that would be really great to get a lot of the guys, just like they've done before with a lot of the other people. Get, get, but the nice thing is getting two guys that are going to click. Yeah. Well, Dale and Dale with a hundred years of stories story between them. Yeah. There you go. See, and that's like Junie Donnelly. If you can get him, he'll open up about a lot of stories yeah, too. Junie's health is really bad. Yeah, uh, I've heard that. Yeah. He's not good. Yeah. <laughs> Tell him he told a story one day about. They were racing on the beach at Daytona, and I think Curtis Turner was driving for the Wood Brothers, and Petty had a couple of cars. Lee was in one, and Richard wasn't racing back then. But somehow the windshield had come out of Curtis's car, the convertible. Right. And it just gained like eight miles an hour because there's no, you know, just no going. Wind. There's nothing now, yeah. And, and and Dale Inman said, next time, old, I, I forget who was driving for him. It, it was Lee and somebody else. It, it might have been Jim Pascal. He said, next time the car come around, <laughs> Pascal was sitting back with his foot up on the windshield trying to, to show it out. To <laughs> kick, out. kick the windshield out. And he said he got his leg caught up on the up on the dashboard and 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 was trying to trying to put the gas down with his left foot <laughs> and brake and shift. shift. And he said, more than Andrew killed himself. <laughs> Tried to kick, trying to kick the windshield out. Because he thought it would be faster. But yeah, Dale, yeah, Dale, Dale will tell that story, and it'll take him a half an hour. Yeah. And you will absolutely, if you're drinking soda, you, it comes out your nose. It just, it's, it's hilarious. Those guys are funny. So but see, the new guys, the new crew chiefs and the new guys, they don't do that. Chad Knauss doesn't even speak to some of the crew chiefs. That's there's no big business now. There, or exactly. It's, it's, there's it's absolutely, the competition levels left alone. There's absolutely no camaraderie now among crew chiefs, even on the same team. 
you know, I mean, you, Jack Rush may have a meeting on Tuesday with his four guys, and that's the only time they speak to each other. Now, allegedly, they share information at all, but they don't tell stories, they don't visit, they don't go out drinking together. It's just, it's all buttoned up now. It's you just, know, yeah, it, we started losing that in the 80s. And you could tell that. Well, motor coaches have ruined the sport. Yeah. Yeah, they're not staying in the motels. <laughs> Cheap <anymore>. hotels, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, fans Cheap can't... hotels with 35 teams in there and only 12 rooms. Yep. <laughs> so, well, yeah, I've been to a couple of them. <laughs> Speed weeks. The fans don't see drivers out in public anymore at IHOP or Denny's or wherever. Because they're yep. always back in the motor, in the motor coach. Motor homes, yeah. So, it's all different. I don't know if it's better or worse, it's just different. Just different. I don't think it's the better. It's a good old day. I, I don't think it is either. No, I haven't been in it quite as long as down here, but, uh, I mean, yeah, I still remember the 70s, the 80s, and it was, you know, it was, it was a different world. Well, we had it fun was... back then. Now, the competition now... Is better than it's ever been. I that's, still contend you got. Yes. You. I, they used to say, "Well, twenty-two and cars the rule book can win is thicker. at any time." And I'm thinking, "Ah, twenty-two cars can't win. Come on." But now you're up to a dozen or so. Yeah. And by that I mean guys who can take a race by the throat and just win it. I don't mean back into it. Right. I mean David Reagan won Daytona in July. He he won it. He didn't back into it. You know, and Trevor Bain at Daytona in, in February. But do you think he backed into it, or is no. he just right place, right time? I mean, we still got to be in a you, Smith at Darlington. You, yeah. you back, you, you back into it. Now it's, you I back into it him. like like Derek Cope did at Daytona. That's true. Yeah. When you yeah. were inside of the place checkered place flag, and, yeah. and the guy blows a tire in front of you. Yep. Were you back into it like Logano did at, at at New Hampshire, when everybody's pits under caution for clouds? And he stays out, and all of a sudden starts raining. Raining, yeah. Paul Menard won Indy. I don't think he backed into it. I thought he now, drove his butt off to win that thing. He got in. He got ahead by pitch strategy, but once he got there, he held him off. He he stayed right there. Right. Yeah. yeah. He wasn't running fifth, yeah. and four guys pitted, and then he won that one. So, yeah. yeah. I'll never forget the day that Dave Marcus, Dave Marcus won Richmond one year and never let a green flag lap. Won it on the last lap. No, no, he won it under caution. Everybody paid in the paid. rain when everybody paid. Right, and he never let a green flag lap. Stay out! You ain't got a shot anyway. Well, the thing was, the <laughs> caution came out for, for sprinkles, and he was almost a full lap behind. Caution comes out as as the leaders are let's say in turn three, and he's just barely ahead of them. And all of a sudden, the leaders this is before you froze the field. All the leaders go in. And he's so far behind, by the time he comes around under caution, hell is pouring. So he stays out. So Marcus won Richmond. He, he never, didn't have to catch up to the field so he could pit. Yeah. <laughs> he, never, he never let a green flag lap. And won that race. He won, under, he won it under caution in the rain. And then had he said, yeah, I had it all. Had him, had him the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't right where I want him. Sure you did. What's the most, I'm going to say wildest, but the most weirdest finish you have ever seen. Oh, God. What was the one that just said that just kept, that that just didn't happen? Well, Kale and Donnie at Daytona. That's the that was race. Wild. That's the race that, that changed NASCAR right. for all time. Um, Elliott running them down like he did at Talladega that year. Earnhardt coming from 18th to first at like. Two laps at Talladega. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he came from 18th and won that scoundrel in the last hundred yards or so. Um, he had Kyle and 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 Davey. Well, no, at, at Richmond, at Open. Richmond, it, well, Earnhardt and Petty and, and Pearson Walter at Daytona got together, yeah. wrecked each other, and Kyle won that one. Yeah, that one. Petty and Pearson at Daytona. That was spectacular. Well, now that's spectacular. But what uh, was the weird one? one? We were just talking well, about I the Dave Marcus. Weird. And what about the time Earnhardt's car crashed? It's upside down. They roll it over. He fires it up. Says, "Thing will still run." He yeah. goes right back out and goes racing. <laughs> but he didn't win the race. He didn't win. But it doesn't matter. But that's still a weird thing. How many times going to flip a car over and start it up and go run the race again? That was Dale. I would I have never expected but anything less out of him. He said he was sitting in the ambulance too, and he's like, "You know, the wheels are still on that thing. What if it fire up?" <laughs> yeah. But, I don't know. I know Petty. I know Pearson snookered Petty at Daytona, 
in July one year, leading him, took the white flag leading, and went down in one and two and just pulled over and stopped. And Petty had no choice but to pass him, yeah. which is what Pierce wanted Pierce out all, all the time. Along. He wanted to slingshot. And then he slingshot on around. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was. And Richard was not happy. He came to the media center as the second well, place guy. Pierce should give him the wave off like he broke or something like that? No, I think he just, I think he just pulled over. He might have thrown his hand up, but hey. I, you know, but he didn't break. Richard was not happy, and I don't know, but he wasn't. He wasn't more happy at, at how it happened than he was. Did it happen? Did he, it he fell for it? Yeah. yeah. He just thought it was ungentlemanly. So, who was it? I mean, I just remember watching. I was supposed to slingshot you. Everybody <laughs> would start trying to slow down to not be in front. Yeah, because you wanted that slingshot move. But I was back, like, yeah. probably the late 80s, where this guy so they would be coming how, on a back straight like 150. <laughs> that's how Petty beat Yarbrough at Daytona in 84. When Ronald Reagan was there, Yeah. He had, he had, they, they had been running together for so long. And, and Petty said, when he realized that Kale wasn't going to pass him no matter what, Richard said, I began to, to like, back off. A half a tenth per lap on the back stretch. Yeah, back in the So up. that so that Kale kind of got used to running, you know, at, at at the right speed. And he said, all of a sudden, I, we went down in there on the last lap, and I floored it. And all of a sudden, he realized he wasn't going to catch me. And, and he said, that's that's how that's how beating back to the line. Uh, caution was out, of course. He won that last race. He won that race on the caution. The caution, yeah. But uh, he but said. Still raced the back. Yeah. Well, well two it, it, it kind of helped. He had a big motor and he had left side tires nah, on the right that's side. A different race. <laughs> that's a different race. But he said he really thought he snookered Kale. He, 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 lulled him, he lulled him into thinking this is how fast he can go. And by God, I think I can pass him. He gave him a space to slingshot And back. as soon as Kale came under him, Richard just floored it. And Kale ended up out there by himself. So, uh, Oops. Yeah. But weirdest finish, I that's I don't know. I've not seen anybody finish on their roof. I've not seen anybody For win a first. race on their roof. Although Davy Allison, Richie Evans did at Martinsville. Did. No, it wasn't quite on his roof. It was it like on the left point. door. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he and Bo Nine got together. Um, but I like the stories about that. They said, you know, they had to get all the pieces up and get the car to the scales. They had to weigh it anyway. And he said, when they got to the scales, there were five shocks in the seat. They were yeah. still too bolted to the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I believe that. Um, did you ever get to meet Smokey Eunuch? We brought him up. Did you ever get to meet him? Yeah, bar just barely, not not a lot. Not a lot. What about Harry Hyde? I've heard some great got, stories got to about meet Harry. him. He pretty well. I, I heard he was quite a character. He was. He was. I mean, he was more. He he could not be a crew chief today because he was too old school. Right. He thought everything could be fixed with shocks and springs. Right. That's all you need. You don't need spacers. You don't need bump stops. Give me shocks and springs and a driver and, you know. Make it go. Me against you. Yeah. Yeah. The good old days. The good old days. What time is it, boys? i got to go home. 8 o'clock. 8.04. It's that time. We're overtime are again. You, are you done? Or do you got to go now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bug you for one more story. You told us. Your first story. We I gotta I gotta bug you for a second story. And I'll let you pick it. He told us the Richard Petty story, which is great, and I'll tell I you off tell that again. You ain't gonna have to tell that one again, because that one was great. We can tell you that with pizza. Okay, I'll, I'll Yeah, that we'll later. we'll tell you that with pizza tonight. Four or five years ago four years ago, maybe three years ago, this month, I flew from I drove to Newark where my sister lives. I flew from Newark to Charlotte, Charlotte to Miami, Miami to Rio de Janeiro, Rio de Janeiro to Brasilia, the capital of Brazil. Yep. I had a helmet I needed Nelson right. Piquet to sign. So I'm in the hotel and I finally get him on the phone. He says, come on over. So, all right. So I go downstairs and I have a cab driver drives me to his office across town. Took about a half an hour. Traffic was off. So I get there, and just as the cab pulls up, PK comes in with his black, stretched black limo, bulletproof, dark glasses, the whole deal. 
and he knew I was coming, and uh, he signed his helmet for me. And I asked him, I said, could you ask your secretary to call me a cab and go back to the hotel? I said, ah, I'll take you back myself. I said, well, you know, it's the middle of your business day. He said, I own the company. I can do whatever the hell I want to do. <laughs> so PK put me in the front seat of his car. PK put me in the front seat of this long, stretch black limo, probably Mercedes. In about 10 minutes, we were back at the hotel. He ran up on curbs. <laughs> he, went down, he went down alleyways. He went around about the wrong way. <laughs> he, he made a half an hour trip, <laughs> turning to 10 minutes. And he pulls up in front of the hotel, screeches to a halt, pops the door, because he had the doors were all locked. Couldn't, yeah. couldn't get out if he wanted to. Popped the door and thanked me for coming, shook my hand, and I got out. And the, the bellhop had come over to open the door, and he looked in, and he saw Nelson Piquet, <laughs> who was like a god down there. Right, and yeah. he's still... You know, other than Ayrton Center, yeah. he's the greatest thing living. And the bellhop screamed, PK, PK, you're Run. here. <laughs> Door slammed, PK's gone. And this guy took me inside the hotel, and he took me by the arm, and he took me to everybody in that lobby. Every bellhop, <laughs> the elevator operator, the desk clerk. He was with PK. PK gave him a ride. He was with PK in the car. I just saw PK. And I thought to myself, my God, what is going on here? And so at Daytona, two years later, or a year later, I walked up to Nelson P.K. Jr. and introduced myself, and I said, I'm the guy who, he said, I heard about you. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you're the guy that my dad drove back to. Oh, yeah, I did. I said, tell me, tell me something. I said, it, does everybody down there idolize your father? He said, why do you think he's got a black windshield? You know, the car. <laughs> black yeah. He said, if people saw him, they'd, they'd, they'd surround his car. They'd want his autograph. He said, he has got to stay in that car with the windows up, darkened windows, and the windshield so nobody knows who he is. And I thought, there's nobody in America. Michael Jordan, maybe. He can walk down Broadway in New York. Oh, exactly, yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but there's nobody in America like that. Because Formula One racing is such a national deal, it's not it's not just a driver; it's a country being represented. And absolutely. Schumacher, I mean, the Germans love Schumacher. They love Sebastian Vettel. The British people love Jensen Button and Damon Hill and those guys. And and Brazil, my God, they thought Ayrton Center was God. Yeah, and there's just no question about it. And and PK is like. Jesus, I guess. The little yeah. God. <laughs> well, you've got to meet them F1 guys. You, yeah, I met them all. You met them all, all well, the alive ones. Oh, the ones yeah, I didn't, alive, I didn't meet the, the dead ones. I didn't meet yeah. the dead ones. I hope not. No, I mean all the champions. Yes, you got all yes, their autographs. Yes. Are, are they just like They couldn't have been nicer. They, they, were so much, they were so much easier to work with than cup guys. Really? I got Michael Schumacher agreed to meet me in Toronto he was doing a Shell Dealers convention. He was retired right, three or four right. years ago. He was in Toronto doing a, a Shell convention, and he, after a bunch of emails back and forth to his assistant, he agreed to meet me in, in a particular hotel at a particular time on a particular day in, in Toronto. So I fly to Toronto, and I stay with a buddy of mine up there, and we take a, a cab to the hotel. I got the helmet, my little bag, my, my Sharpie. And I'm thinking, you know, this is, this is not going to happen. <laughs> you know, this guy's going to fly over here from from Germany and pick up his $100,000 appearance fee and speak to the shell dealers, and then he's going to hit the road. But I said, i got to do it because he said he's going to be there. And I'll tell you, within, within 30 seconds of being right dead on time, he showed up in the room where the death clerk said, ah, oh, Mr. Schumacher said he will meet you at the something-something room, the, you know, the embassy That's room or the whatever, yeah. <laughs> and I'm in there, I'm thinking, oh, Christ, this is not going to happen. And I'm, within, I, I'm serious, within 30 seconds of being on, exactly on time, Schumacher came in, introduced himself, signed the helmet, couldn't have been nicer. 
ask me about the petties, ask me about the camp, ask me, you know, who do you still need? If you need anybody I can help you with, let me know. Couldn't have been nicer. And I'm thinking, God, this is easier than Tony Stewart. And it was. Yeah. I mean, he was absolutely couldn't have been nicer. Elaine Prost invited me to his home in Paris. <coughs> flew to London. No, flew to Paris. Uh, no, flew to London. Got Jody Schechter. Took a train to Paris. Got Fernando Alonso and um, Elaine Prost the same day. And Elaine Prost gave me his home phone number, his address. Told his doorkeeper to let me in. When I came in, he said, Monsieur Prost apologizes. He had to go downtown to a brief meeting. He'll be right back. Would you like to sit in his his study, his room? And I walk in there, and there's every, I mean, you talk about Formula One championship memorabilia. I mean, trophies and gigantic world championship plaques, all this kind of stuff. I'm thinking, God, this is Jeez, this is I'm cool. not worthy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And he came in. He apologized for being late. He signed a helmet. He said, "Do you have to rush off?" And I said, "I got to go see um, Fernando Alonso down at the Renault World Headquarters." He said, "Not a good driver." <laughs> said, okay. He said, "Would you like to stay for dinner?" And I thought, "God, here's my chance to have dinner," but I had to go, and I did. But they they could not have been nicer. Every one of them. Alan Jones came from Australia to, I liked him. to was, Laguna Seca to do a, he was part of a, um, a vintage old history car deal. Right. And he was in line, uh, he, he had a long line for autographs. He knew I was coming. And and the lady had come up and she said, like three guys ahead of me was the, was the end of the line. And I'm there with my helmet and I'm thinking, no lady, <laughs> the end of the line is here. I don't care what you say. And as the line moved on, she kept saying, sir, you cannot move forward. The end of the line is these gentlemen up here. So I finally got close enough to Alan Jones to hold up the helmet. Saying, he said, come here. And, you know, he had me come around to the side. He couldn't have been nice. I mean, they're all just as, just as, Nicky Lauda invited me to his office. He owns an airline, yeah. which is kind of cool. Hmm. And he, he said, if you come to, if you come to, to Vienna within this time frame and come to my office at the airport between 11 and 3, I'll be there. And I'll be glad to sign. And he did. They, those guys were so much easier. Now, it wasn't easier to get to them. But they were, but they were more you, willing one, to. Right. Yeah. Once you got to them, they, they were far more accommodating than cup drivers. I mean, they wanted to know what's the charity all about, who's it for, oh, Richard and Kyle Payne. Oh, yeah, no Richard, no Kyle, good piece. And um, they couldn't have been nicer, much more so than these yahoos out here. Yeah. So what do you attribute that to? I don't think they had been fawned over as much as cup drivers have been. Formula One guys, really? Well, the media-wise, I think well, media fans wise. fans probably love them to death, but but they've never they've they sort of they've had to kind of earn their way. I think they don't. A lot of them don't do all. They don't do. Interviews and autographs. Well, and a lot of the guys yeah. you're, you're talking about, these, these, this is from the generation most of drivers them are retired. That, that, that came right. from the bottom. Yeah. They came from their yeah. carts, their Formula Fords, out of pocket, mortgaged the house, and made it up there. Go karts. Unlike a lot of today's yeah. generation where it's daddy stroke a check and I'm famous now. You know? Yeah. It was funny. I was in London a year ago this weekend, a year ago last weekend, and I still needed I needed uh, Jensen Button, who was the maybe the 09 champion, and I needed um, Sebastian Vettel, who had won the 10 championship. Mm -hmm. Right. And they both knew I was coming. And Button came through with his little assistant, and she said, Oh, Mr. Pierce, come So he signed it. And I'm sitting there in the hotel, this fancy hotel in London, sort of a, a Waldorf-type place. I look in, and there comes this little bitty scrawny guy, about yay big, with a raincoat dragging the ground and a hat on, and a pair of sunglasses at 11 o'clock at night, he looked like a like a bum. He looked like some derelict off the street. The sunglasses mean he's famous. Well, Sebastian Vettel, <laughs> the world city, the world champion. And he saw me, and I had the helmet, and he said, Oh, you the guy with the helmet? Yeah, oh, come on, hey, Sebastian Vettel, how are you? Thank you very much. He said, I'm sorry I'm late. 
I've been out. I said, where'd you go to dinner? He said, went to McDonald's down the street. <laughs> <laughs> and I know he was right because there is a McDonald's down the street. <laughs> you won't see Tony Stewart driving to a Burger King anymore. No, no. But, but like I'm saying, he was, nobody recognized him. He was just walking through London late at night. It couldn't have been nicer. Those guys are really, you know. And I'm really glad the first autograph I got for the helmet was Phil Hill. Really? The yeah. only American Formula One only champion. Only American. And he was quite ill when I got when I got to him. Uh, and his brother, I'm sorry, his son helped him sign the helmet. And I don't even know that Phil knew I was there because he was, at that point, pretty far pretty gone. Bad. He died about six months later. But Andretti was easy. Andretti invited me up to, to Nazareth. Um... It was kind of fun. It was kind of fun to meet those guys. Still hadn't okay. sold that damn thing, but still. This really plays it. that is, time is I climbed through a garage crossing? window to get yeah, an autograph. Yeah, Jeff Gordon's got it. Oh, he won it? I gave, no, I gave it to Jeff. I said, you can you can sell this thing for big money way easier than I can. You've got more people with money than I know. And I said, whatever you sell it for, two-thirds will go to your charity and the third will go to the petty camp. He said, fine. So he thinks he can get it sold for 100000 He thinks he can get it $100,000. Well, look at the names that are on that thing, too. Yeah. Hey, if I win the lottery, I'd do it. <laughs> and I told and him, I said, helmet. I've seen it. I said, you know, remember, tell everybody it's a charity donation. You know, the helmet costs 150 bucks. You know, you can't write off that part of the charity, but but you can write off the, the purchase price. Yeah. Yeah. To charity. Because it, it's being donated to charity. Yeah. yeah. So. All right, let's get on out of here. Thank you for the story, Al. All Wonderful right. having you here. I'm glad a pleasure. To do it. Glad to do it. We'll get, we might get you in here after the first of the year after all this other silly season happens. Well, the only the only seat left is um, is the 43, is the, yeah, 43 car. Yeah. The only seat left of any seat. Now, the 71 car, the, the Kevin Buckler crowd still needs a driver. Um, 51, if Landon Castle doesn't come back to the 51 car, that seat's available. Um, what else is available? That's about it. That's just about it, unless there's some new teams coming in, or and I haven't heard of any new ones. And I don't know if there'll be a Rookie of the Year class this year. I'm trying to remember who might be, who could be Rookie of the Year this year coming up. Sounds like it's ripe for the picking. Danica? No. Nah, <laughs> the only one. you got to run more than 10 races. Is she scheduled to run 12? Still not enough. She will be the nationwide most popular driver, though. That's, that's, that's a I, given. That's a given. i got to get, yeah. You can write that off right now. And she can't be Rookie of the Year because she ran too many races last year. Right. But she'll be most popular. And Junior will be most popular in Cup. Again. And Austin Dillon will be most popular nationwide. Yeah. Danica. Oh, Danica. I'm sorry, Danica. In trucks, it'll be Ty Dillon. Ty, Ty will do it in trucks. Yeah. Elliot Sadler's still back in the two again for next year, but with yep. Richard Childress. I was glad, kind of glad to hear that. I thought he did a I good was, job. I was hoping he would win the championship with zero wins. That would have been interesting. That's I wanted, consistency. I wanted well. It's also pretty mediocre racing too. I was I was anxious because I asked Mike Helton on a media tour last January about the same time. I said, "How are you going to explain to the public that some cat wins eight or nine or ten nationwide races and doesn't have any points at all, and your champion doesn't win any races, and he is the champion?" Championship. And Mike said. I think that by then our fans will understand how the system works. I said, okay, your hardcore fans understand it. We're about to guy picking up the paper in Waukegan or in Spokane who says, how can Kyle Busch have won or whoever, pick a name, um, Kislowski or Bush or whatever, how can he have won 10 races and finished 40th in points and this Sadler guy wins no races and he's a champion? How can that be? I said, Mike, you're going to have a PR problem on your hands. Well, Stenhouse bailed him out. <laughs> Stenhouse won two races. Yeah. 
And he, he kept them from being embarrassed, embarrassed. beyond words. So. All right, let's get on out of here. We've got to find out what that rumble was. I'd like to thank everybody for so watching Let's Talk up. Racing tonight <laughs> with all our guests and the fun we had. And we'll see you next you week. Hi, my name is Natalie Sather. I drive the 94 k and Lady Eagle Safety Wear, Butler Built Seats, Bell Helmets, thank Hooker you. Harness Seat Belts, number 94 at South Boston Speedway. Be sure to listen to Let's Talk Racing TV. I'm Sam Hunter, I'm 42 car. I want to thank Let's Talk Racing. Hey guys, I'm Daytona 500 winner Trevor Bain, and thank you for watching Let's Talk Racing. Hi, I'm Robert Richardson Jr., driver of the number 23 Dodge Challenger for R3 Motorsports in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and you're watching Let's Talk Racing. Uh, I'm Timothy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs> Let's Talk Racing is brought to you by PC Doctors, Computer Sales and Services. This doctor still makes house calls. And also Hampton Incredible Tees and Signs, both located at 1248 North King Street in Hampton, Virginia.